Hello everyone and welcome to my first impressions with Rise of Flight United. I know next to nothing about this entire series. I've seen it at my local game shop several times. And about all I know about it is that it is a World War One flight simulator. And looks like we've got an SE-5A, an Uplatros, a couple of Sopwiths. So, uh... Yeah, it looks good, at least. I've already gone into the options and set up my controls and such. So, that's all good. Alright, so let's see. Quick mission. And that main menu is as far as I've got. So this is fully 100% brand new. I've got no idea what I'm looking at. Okay, so looks to be three mission types. We've got survive, skirmish, and duel. Aha, uh -huh. and conditions down here. What the hell? Let's just go start. That's an SC5A, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of the backbone of the Royal Flying Corps. Sup with something. I'm not as uh, caught up with my World War One aviation as I probably ought to be. Yeah, I got no clue. <laughs> but it does look like a really, really good game, at least. I know that one, Fokker DR1. Actually, not the Red Baron's principal aircraft. That would be the Albatross. Small wonder that these sorts of planes even flew at all. A lot of them were actually still using wing warping technology as opposed to actual control surfaces. Okay, let's see. Winds at ground level. Northeast, zero meters per second. Okay, that's interesting. That gives me meters per second and not knots. Primary objective. Uh, destroy enemy aircraft. Okay, I can do that. Hangar. Okay, I was completely wrong. Apparently it's a Newport 17C1. Hmm. Oh, that is cool. So this is obviously fuel. This is weapon focal length. For those who don't know, the, uh, well, it doesn't really apply to this particular aircraft, but something like the Albatross or the Camel, which have multiple weapons, they're canted inwards slightly so that the rounds essentially intersect at a focal point a particular distance from the aircraft, so you would aim to position your aircraft behind the enemy at that particular range so that you essentially drill into the one spot with all of your rounds. I think we'll take that out to about 200, I'm assuming meters. Uh, field modifications. Okay, so that's gun sight, anemometer, <laughs> airspeed, altimeter, compass, clock, and pilot light. Probably not going to need those, <laughs> really. Right. Let's see, what do we got? Single Lewis Overwing. Nice. Twin Lewis Overwing. Can I put... What? Um... Alright, that's just a glorified bottle rocket. Um... Oh, I have to buy them. Okay. Uh... This game is free to play, I should note, so that's probably some manner of microchang's action. Ooh, I could put a scarf on my guy. Let's put a white streamer. And that's some background on the aircraft. Nice. I might read that after we're done, but okay. Plane settings. Oh, that's that. Okay. Start. Okay. First hurdle. That's a little annoying. So, start mission. 
this seems to be a thing that so many free-to-play titles tend to do. They show you all the possible selections, but they make no attempt to tell you which ones you can actually use. Great. Alright, let's switch to the dual. Uh, ah, okay, here's my plane up here. Can... Whoop. Okay, yeah, now I see. I should have actually read the uh, menus. So it looks like there's a pretty good selection of aircraft here. Yeah, we'll just go with this thing. Can I start the mission now, please? So yeah. It's not what I thought it was, but still not exactly great. Why would it have auto-selected a plane that I don't already own? Just these little things that mark games like this down. Okay. Duel. Wind, south by west. And you are up for a duel. Upon destruction of each enemy aircraft, a new one will arrive and attempt to destroy you. Fantastic. So, it's essentially wave survival. Gotcha. Okay. That's loud. Bear me a moment. Okay, that's a little better. Decent cockpit modeling. Whoa. Oh, jeez. Alright, yeah, that's right. I'm actually in a dogfight, so... Alright, have to reverse some controls. Noted. It's cool, I can see the control linkage is coming. Whoa! He's on my tail! Okay. Feel the cheese! It's nice and responsive. Alright. I'm assuming this is a guy. There's also one on my tail. And open. Why is my trigger not working? All right. Uh, okay. Bear me a moment while I fix this. Whoa! Those were tracers. Alright, another point of criticism, it appears I cannot reverse axes. Get off my tail, you son of a bitch. So I'm pulling my throttle back to increase power at the moment. Jesus, get off my tail! Okay, there's the stall, okay. Ah, jeez. Alright, I can tell this is going to be really hard. I welcome that though. Ah! He overflew him. Alright, let's see. There's my guns. Ah, shit, stall spin. Alright, let's just dive to treetop level. Let's see if we can lose him there. I should note, I have turned the sound down. It is still insanely loud though. And I kind of wish I could change the field of view. Alright. Let's pull up into a loop. Let's make an Immelman turn. Ah, Jeez. And that completely failed. Okay, so, the flight model seems to be quite challenging and realistic. I like being able to see the control linkages moving. However, axis reversal would be a nice thing to see. But I can certainly praise the challenge that seems to pose. Ah, oh, Jesus. Why 
Where the fuck are you? Oh, there's my ribbon. I got no idea where this son of a bitch even is. There you are. Yeah, hi. So, yeah, come on. You're shooting past me. Seems the AI could use some work. Let's gain altitude and energy. That's the main thing that you gotta keep in mind when dog fighting. It's all a balance of energy. If you have potential energy, that is height and speed, you have options to maneuver. When you make maneuvers, you expend energy. Which means, essentially, you can gain energy by gaining altitude and then diving on your opponent and or gaining speed to a point of course and you've got to calculate when and how to best expend that energy to put yourself at the advantage so that means keeping your speed and your altitude up and not making rash maneuvers. Alright. We'll power it down. Tighten up this turn. Whoa! I had you! I can hear my plane struggling and this guy's going over the top. Come on. Neither of us can do this all day. There you are. Uh, damn it. Uh, just as I stalled. This is great. I haven't had a good combat flight sim in a while. Whoa. That. Okay, just about trimmed my hair. Whoa, there you are. Come on, roll over. I have firewalled the throttle. Ah, I have you now, you son of a bitch. Oh, maybe not. Oh, jeez. Nose down. Speed up. Get out of the stall. <gasps> this is excellent. I'm having fun couple of speed bumps, such as the axes and the uh, strange choosing a non-free aircraft, but I think I could look past those. For the uh, sheer enjoyment factor I'm getting, let's just see what the ballistics are like. So, flying relatively straight and level. Okay, so... Let's see, aim at the top of that light part. Yep, so bullet drop is a thing. It's not too severe though. Alright, I think we'll finish that one. Oh, I can hear again. So, the UI, kind of hard to read at times, but uh, as long as one pays attention, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's take a uh, look at these options. So, in the general tab, you can choose your control mode, mouse and joystick. I've got a HOTAS flight stick myself, so I don't know what the mouse controls like. I assume, I hope, 
it's similar to War Thunder internationalization if that's even a word English, French, Dutch I'm assuming Russian and Spanish okay okay so I've previously selected imperial measurements and yet it still gave me the wind in meters per second curious uh, customizations okay so that's showing other players schemes flight recording so does this have a built-in recorder hmm I might have to look into that and of course profile that's a nice thing to have and then of course ah here's the FOV um, okay I'm gonna have to look into that elsewhere because I'm not entirely sure what those mean but input sensitivity sports force feedback which is nice my Cytec X55 doesn't have force feedback but that's a nice thing to have anyway and of course controls and apparently supports up to uh, four engines so I'll just show you what happens just a single click on this box then move the axis pretty standard if there was a little box down here that said invert that would be nice because as it stands it's reversed I have to pull it back to increase and push it forward to decrease but just in the engine controls alone there is a lot of control so you can get right into the micromanaging of your aircraft if you so choose ah yes I ran into this before when I was setting up settings if you change things in one of these tabs and then go to click over to another one you have to click apply it doesn't collectively save the settings for the entire thing which is nice it sort of allows you to keep track of exactly what you're doing and this is another cool thing so you can customize the response curves for all your axes axes for all aircraft which tells me that each aircraft or at least each make of aircraft has its own flight model which is a superb thing to see and then of course video settings for some reason the scroll bar defaults to the bottom but you've got a full slew of resolutions in the drop down frame rate limit full screen and v-sync gamma, I might actually turn that down a bit post effects high dynamic range bloom, raindrops, super sampling and it even supports crossfire and SLI I wish I had that unless I don't now the sound you may have noticed that the uh, engine was kind of droning and drowning out of everything else I would love to see individual audio channels for engine, environment and weapons at least and then of course network for setting up multiplayer sessions so wrapping up rise of flight free to play obviously uh, cosmetics and from what I've seen other aircraft can be purchased via microtransaction if you play through the campaign I imagine you will unlock more aircraft interesting that the uh, seems the Russian campaign is locked alright so something to be said for a uh, sheer amount of paid content but the core game itself I absolutely love the flight models the, uh, the combat itself the 
again, I'll play around with the FOV and things like that. But, uh, even though I don't think I hit that guy at all, that was still a really, really rewarding dogfight. And, uh, yeah, so if you're at all interested in World War One aviation, flight sims, give this a shot. Most definitely. There are other games in the Rise of Flight series, not all of which, in fact I believe very few of which are free to play. I might end up looking into those as well. But for now, Rise of Flight United I approve. Definitely a good uh, intermediate combat sim. So, on that note, I'm Skylight Lightning. See you later.